Welcome to uh, this CTO Focus session where I have the pleasure to welcome my guest for today, Sachin Gupta from Google Cloud. Welcome, Sachin. Thanks, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here. And I think it's a good time to talk about how we can jointly leverage a combination of AI, obviously, mobile and cloud. And it's coming together in industry after industry, of course, also in telco. It would be great to touch upon some of the gains, some of the opportunities that, uh, that you see here or that we see together. So what's your take on this? Where are we in the industry and, and what are the opportunities? So first of all, look, it seems to be a great time to be alive. You know, I'm old enough to remember the first era, which was probably the internet. Uh, and then after that, like the three that you talked about with mobile, cloud, and now AI coming together, the possibilities across verticals and the particularly, particularly telco providers is just enormous. And so when you think about that, like from a mobile point of view, the ubiquitous uh, access, you know, high quality, high bandwidth now with 5G that you can get for any kind of devices, you know, IoT and any kind of users, all of these now generate all of this data that we can use to predict what might be happening from a health point of view, what might be happening in a factory floor point of view, for example, and feed that into the cloud. And now instead of trying to manually comb through all that data, you can leverage the best of AI to interact with that data that was perhaps dark data. You, it was not being leveraged for high value before, but now with the AI capabilities that are available, you can very quickly gain business insights, business insights that can help you operate the environment better, reduce cost, that can help you engage customers better as a provider, that can also help you go after new revenue streams potentially. I think those are the I think the obvious areas to dig a little bit deeper into Sachin because if you start with that first area of quality efficiency or perhaps cost improvements, we do see it uh, when we apply AI in the 5G networks today that you get better energy efficiency, you, you get the kind of gains that any CTO would expect if you're automating, applying even autonomous network level 4 capabilities to the network. But I think you, you have uh, great examples and experience from that area as well. So what's, what's your take on that? Yes, uh, when you think about the operational sides, I mean, operating that network, especially for a provider, is, can, you know, can be quite costly. Uh, these are very, very large, complicated networks. Now, thankfully, Google has experience in this area, so does Ericsson. And so we've got one of the largest networks in the world that Google runs ourselves for all of our properties. And we can take that experience of creating a digital twin, uh, applying AI for predictive analytics, doing self-healing, redirecting when there's going to be a major event, for example, and we need a lot more bandwidth, a lot more sessions per second available in a particular area, redirecting capacity to those kinds of business needs. We can come to our customers and say, we can help you move up the ANO ladder, autonomous network operations, mm -hmm. to realize significant cost benefit, but it's also beyond cost of benefit. It's about Again, uh, consistent availability all the time. That is what the end user now expects. And so it's about mm. reliability, it's about security of those networks, and of course, it's about lowering the overall operational cost, leveraging analytics and AI, as well as the cloud. Have you seen any uh, specific uh, benchmark data or, or any data that you can share in terms of the gains? I, I think we see anything from 10, 20, 30 percent in some cases, some domains even more. What's, uh, what's, your, what's your experience so far? So the experience depends on what your starting point is. Like are you at level 2, are you at level 2.5 and where you're getting. Mm -hmm. But the gains can be you know, far higher than what you're describing. So we've seen customers talk about how uh, they've been able to reduce faults by 50 percent. And so just the impact of faults, I should say, by 50 percent. Just by just by leveraging some of the autonomous network operations capabilities, uh, we worked um, with a customer, Deutsche Telekom, actually, who created a RAN agent that is built on some of the new AI capabilities to optimize the experience for all of the users uh, that are being serviced in their areas. And so the benefits can be huge, and the benefits will vary based on the outages or the events that might be happening mm -hmm. that are that are upsetting the network performance at that time. And when it comes to growth opportunities, I, I think we're very excited about the opportunities to 
ultimately be more adapted to customers' needs. We see the need to go to more tailored services, even tailored services at scale. Today we have capabilities in 5G to offer network slice services. You can offer capabilities from the network, expose them over network APIs. But looking at the, the opportunities here, we think that you can do much more when it comes to offering things, new services on the fly, certainly with the, with the help of AI. What's, uh, what's your take on the, on the growth opportunities here? Yes, maybe I'll talk about two very quickly. One is on, on the B2B side, and the yeah. other is around expansion of the network itself. Right, on the B2B side, when you think about applying AI and analytics for network operations, that applies, again, in many different industries. So, for example, on a factory floor, uh, detecting faults in, in what you're producing uh, automatically through vision, for example, uh, or detecting that there's going to be a failure in the machinery which could bring your factory down and doing predictive maintenance. There's multiple examples where you need that data moved with high bandwidth, high performance, leveraging 5G, potentially 5G slicing, or it might even be a private 5G environment inside that factory floor, then connecting all the way up into the cloud uh, with the service provider, uh, uh, telecom provider connectivity, uh, and then ensuring that we can apply the right AI capabilities to that to provide a very fast outcome, uh, decision, result, uh, in order to improve revenue, lower the cost experience by that industry. There's other examples mm -hmm. where, you, you know, which are maybe n not even B2B, but you can think about uh, in healthcare, a lot of the signals that come in from all the devices that people have, maybe you went to your doctor and they gave you a device to monitor different uh, uh, vital signs, and mm -hmm. uh, leveraging that data to provide better care when you come into that hospital. So it's yeah. a, you know consumers are using it, but the the hospital is then able to use that to provide you better care. And so this, I mean, that requires uh, reliable connectivity. It requires security. There's so many different elements that must come together and presents an opportunity for telecom providers to go out there and say, we can offer you this end-to-end -end solution value that brings the power of mobile, cloud, and AI all together. All right? Mm. So that's, that's one area that I think is very exciting. The other one that, uh, that's also very exciting is if you're a telecom provider and you operate in a country or in a, or in a few countries and you want to expand globally, we're also bringing the power of Google Cloud from a network point of view, to the table. And so imagine instead of building physical infrastructure and pops, the, the, these uh, telecom providers can leverage Google as well as things like Ericsson On Demand to create mm -hmm. virtual pops throughout our cloud and our backbone to expand their service coverage to all new regions and areas. Right? And so that's a business they already know of today, but it allows to go do a very low capital rapid expansion that's only possible because of the scale and the ubiquity that we have now with cloud. And I think that is, we're just at the beginning of that, uh, Sajin, when it comes to offering network services when they're needed and, and where they're needed with a certain SLA. And I mentioned before the ability to offer network slice based services dynamically, of course, uh, then. Uh, <clears throat> order them and, and pay for them over network APIs. But I think that there are multiple ways to get into new network types with a combination of, of mobile cloud and AI here. I, I have to, I think, comment on, on what you mentioned about the B2B side as well, because I'm equally excited about the opportunities. Could be in the manufacturing space, standardizing on 5G in a manufacturing plant, plant gives a flexibility. Of course, the productivity gains. The hospitals, the healthcare sector, I think they are in some parts of the world really aggressively adopting 5D as that digital platform. Think about what you do in the operating theater where you're connecting the, uh, the machinery, the, uh, the goggles or the, the AR glasses. You connect the ambulances in the city, you connect the, the households and, and the homes, you can do remote home care. All of these things coming together on top of one scalable 5D infrastructure. Of course, then with AI capabilities and, and cloud capabilities that are secure and, and fit for purpose, typically either hybrid or on-prem in some of those cases. But that is now becoming a blueprint that can scale to many more hospitals, many more healthcare systems around the world. 
And uh, I think that's truly exciting because here we are not just saving cost, the productivity goes up with maybe 30%, but we are also increasing the patient outcome by similar numbers, so 25-30%. And that's of course huge numbers for, for healthcare sector. So all of those things I think comes together. I, I, and I, what I would add to that is one of the big enablers is something you mentioned, which is network APIs. Uh, because you can now leverage all those capabilities through leadership that Ericsson is providing, of course, mm. uh, through network APIs, just like you can consume cloud APIs, that uh, makes those solutions come to life uh, much more easily. And, and ultimately uh, make them available where developers are on their favorite platform. And that may be a Google platform, that may be an Ericsson Vonage platform, but it makes it easier to adopt these new network capabilities because developers building applications, they have access to these network APIs that are globally available, they are in a known format, and you also have a clear capability that is, is then available more or less around the world. So I think all of these things really opens up for a lot of innovation on the platform as well. That's exactly right. So Sachin, this uh, uh, still at the beginning, but I think a uh, good movement in the industry. And of course, this wouldn't happen unless we had strong partnership like, uh, like the one we have between Google and Ericsson. I also think it really pays to the strengths of openness when it comes to, to the ecosystem. Inviting partners, startups, bigger, bigger companies, really helping to innovate solutions in the end-to-end -end space. This is just the early days. But I think that that openness will, will really help the industry with tremendous innovation opportunities. So uh, thank you so much for this uh, chat session. And of course, thanks for the partnership. And I'm really looking forward to what we can do together going forward. So big thank you. Thank you as well. And I am also extremely optimistic with uh, what we can do together uh, and, and continue to help our customers and partners. Thank you.